coming up on Meet the Drapers. We managed to get over 5,000 users, along with protecting IP with Banalized Trademark. Astrology app spend is actually growing 65% year over year. And in June, uh, it's going to be 100 coffee shops right there in Mexico. What are the things that you believe that can make this a unicorn? Welcome to Meet the Drapers. I'm Tim Draper. This is my father, Bill Draper. My sister, Polly Draper. We are here to create the next generation of startup heroes. Every week, three heroes pitch their game-changing ideas to us. We choose one winner to move to the playoffs. Three heroes of our choice then move to the finals. But here's the big twist. You, the viewers, can invest with us in these companies. The three heroes that you fund the most will also move to the finals where they'll battle it off for half a million dollars. The power is now in your hands. Well, welcome everybody to Meet the Drapers. I'm Tim Draper. I'm a venture capitalist with Draper Associates. On my right is Bill Draper, one of the pioneers of venture capital. He started Draper Richards Kaplan, a foundation for funding entrepreneurs that are nonprofits. And my sister, Polly Draper, she's a famous actress, director, writer. She does it all in Hollywood. That's our family. However, we got a new member of the Draper family. Ronnie Lott. If you don't know Ronnie, you don't live in the Silicon Valley. Ronnie is one of the absolute best football players in the history of the world. He, with Harris Barton and Joe Montana, started this fund of funds. He's been an investor for many years. So Ronnie, thank you so much for being a judge here. Thank you, thank you. You know, we're always talking about entrepreneurs being heroes and you're clearly a great hero. What is it that makes a hero? What is it that drives you to be a winner and to to just accomplish whatever it is that's set in front of you. If you think about winning, there's something that really is exciting. And there's something about the feelings that you get, along with the fact that uh, you get a chance to do that with hopefully some really amazing people. Just think about your family and just think about the fun that you just had. And, and, and to me, that's a winning family. And so the characteristics are there and what's great about that is that when you have a family like that and you have people that are in the huddle that can have some commonality around winning, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's pretty good. And that's what you're doing right now. You're still doing it. We do have one thing in common. We both played for Coach Walsh. I did it at Stanford. I didn't realize that. So what position did you play? I'm a tight end. I was number three, so they, I was easy to sacrifice. <laughs> Put it this way, you know, you know the commitment and you understand all of what Bill Walsh talked about. And what I love is that you played with a great team. He kind of looked at football the way entrepreneurs look at business. They say, what could be done differently? What could be done in a way that hasn't been done before? And I'll tell you, it was the first football practice that I ever had with him. And he, he just said, run 500 button hooks and then you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> and he just wanted me to run the exact same play over and over and over so that I was like a cog in his wheel. That's, uh, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. It was a big day. I think it went pretty late. Let's bring on the heroes. Let's bring on some entrepreneurs. And before we do, let's see what's happening behind the scenes. A long back when my co-founder and I used to play fantasy sports, we knew it took long to do homework. So I actually went to him and said, hey, can we actually speed this up? Because it takes too long to do research. How will we build software to aggregate data and make research easier? And that's what we started Fanalyze. With Fanalyze, we believe we could change how people get sports content and sports data. And we're saving time for people, and they can spend that with their family, friends, and even their job. 
As an immigrant, you come to the U.S. for the American dream, and it's, it's to build a successful company, uh, and that's where I'm at right now. And winning the Drapers is really a validation uh, in my journey to do that. You should invest in FanLies because we're building the Google for sports data. We have the right team to execute, and the growing market of sports betting is enormous. Trust in me because we know we're going to make it happen. Okay, our first entrepreneur of the day is Juan from Fanalyze. And Juan, give us your pitch. My name is Juan Juan, CEO of Fanalyze. We're building the sports search engine and analysis platform to quickly get accurate sports data. I grew up on the tougher side of Silicon Valley, filled with gangs, drugs, and crime. Sports actually kept me out of trouble playing basketball, football, and baseball. Fantasy sports and sports betting have over 100 million Americans participating. We want a piece of the exploding sports betting market estimated at $215 billion by 2025. Everyone wants to win, but they just don't have the time and data to do the research needed. On average, we spend about 10 hours a week on research. And you can see Americans lose about $120 billion a year in sports betting. We needed to speed this up. So we built Fanalyze, a sports search engine to simplify the process to actually get accurate sports data we're integrating natural language processing to get to a specific data point faster by answering conversational queries. For example, show me past game stats on the 49ers against the Chiefs. Our comparison is patent pending. We launched our beta product last year and focused on talking to users to get to product market fit. We managed to get over 5,000 users, along with protecting our IP with banalized trademark and falling for the utility patent. Currently, we have MLB data and launching NFL soon. Our goal for 2021 is to add NBA data along with the Olympics, targeting 10,000 customers paying $50, leading to half a million in revenue. My co-founder, Chris and I have known each other since we were kids. Both of us started our careers in Silicon Valley working for tech startups, combined 40 years of experience in engineering and product design. Now we're ready to scale. Let's team up to change how each fan analyze sports data. Thank you. Terrific. So you're counting on that, that real fanatic, not just uh, the one who kind of joins the fantasy football group so that they can just kind of hang out with the guys. You're looking for the one who wants to know every statistic and every... That's what we have. And you want, and the person who uses you is going to win the fantasy football draw or win the competition. That's correct, Tim, and, and also when they bet on teams as well. How are you developing your odds? And, and, and are you gonna develop the odds from Vegas or are you gonna develop your own odds? Talk to me We're about that. We're creating, actually creating our own algorithm. We're looking at the player impact performance. A couple of ways we get the data is we aggregate it uh, from top sources and we license it from Sport Radar. How much do you charge for this service? So we're charging uh, $10 a month for fantasy and then $30 a month for sports betting. And how do you differ from uh, uh, DraftKings? So DraftKings has the games, they do all the transactions, they bet on DraftKings, they come to Fanalyze to help them win on DraftKings. So did you ever think of taking a venture capital model here where you take 20% of the winnings of anybody who, who uses your data to get there? Yeah, if we could integrate with uh, the DraftKings and FanDuel uh, and, and get that data, I mean, that, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a commission, we'll take a cut. Uh, that's a good revenue model. How far along are you? Uh, do you have revenue yet? Yeah, you know, we're still pre-revenue, but uh, we're turning, turning on the paywall for NFL and, and, and uh, upcoming NBA. You've been giving it away free? Uh, it's a freemium model, so we'll let them try it for a bit and then uh, make them pay for it. How many people are using it for free now? Uh, we had about 5,000 users using the app. Uh, but our goal is to convert that to paying customers. As of now, uh, you, you're giving this all away free. You, you have no idea whether you can charge for it? No, we, we know we could charge. We've talked to users. We've did surveys. We listed all the data points that, that's hard to get. We asked them, which data points would you like and how much you would pay for it? So we've seen people would pay uh, $10 to $40 a month. So. We are gonna turn that on soon, but we have validated with users that they did pay for that data to help them with uh, increasing their chances of winning. There are a lot of companies that 
provide data for a lot of reasons. I want to know why your data makes you different than all the other companies out there. So what we're doing is we're aggregating data from the top sources. Our analogy is, is our competitors are Excite and Yahoo and AltaVista. Uh, they were the top search engine. They created more page views and Google came on just focused on search. That's what we're doing. We're focusing on search, relevant data to the user faster and easier. And then we aggregate the relevant data for the users to, to decide. But competitors are focused on exclusive data on their own, news on their own, but we're taking everything out from you know, the top sources and put into in one location uh, and for all the top sports. And then the other thing that I wanna ask you, which I think is really the, probably the most difficult question for you is what happens when the supercomputers that Google and all these other companies are able to build, how do you compete against that? Because that's coming. A lot of people are looking at these companies now that have the capabilities of taking all the data and then reversing it and making it more predictable. Supercomputers will, you know, sometimes make mistakes. We're looking at performance uh, data as well. We're looking at social media data. So we're trying to combine different data sets to improve our, our, our algorithm. Of course, computers will come, but uh, we definitely want to compete with them with uh, more talented engineers uh, and da data science. Humans can compete with computers uh, based on certain variables of data that we can pull. We're not going to give up. Or we're definitely here to compete and, and build the best algorithm. Terrific. Well, look, thank you so much for coming. We love thank how you, people make a big impact on the world. Good job. Sounds good. Thank you very much. We'll be right back on Meet the Drapers. All right, heroes! <laughs> Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. All right, so what did you all think of Fanalyze? In the 15 years that he talked about of his experience is really interesting, you know, because that's a, a long time, but we're talking about you got to beat Vegas. That's pretty tough to do. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. I know, when I took my kids to Vegas, I, they said, oh, I'm going to win all this money, and I said, you know, see those big buildings all up and down the strip? Those were all built on the backs of people like you who said you were going to make a bunch of money here. Exactly. <laughs> so true. Polly, what did you think? Well, being n a non-expert at either at gambling or football, I defer to Ronnie on everything. <laughs> it's his expertise. <laughs> It's his area. When it comes to the thumbs, I'm just going to watch whatever his thumb does. And if it goes up, I put it up. If it goes down, I put it down. I thought the guy was a nice guy, but he didn't yeah. actually seem very confident. He felt like a yeah. person that, that wasn't sure he belonged to. I mean, the right answer to the supercomputer question is, hey, we've got software. We're going to adapt to new technologies as they come. It's not like, we can beat the supercomputers because we're humans, because that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, his first comment was computers can be wrong, which was... Right. Um, <laughs> I've been wrong a lot more than my computer has. Dad, what did you think? No, I'm, I'm uh, definitely out. Uh, I don't think he had it. Okay, we're going to go thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around, and then you go ahead and give us the vote. Yeah, there we Boom. go. Oop. Yeah, I'm afraid we're thumbs down. And I just remembered Ronnie Lott won a Super Bowl because he broke that little finger. Ronnie, you may want to show that little finger. No, I don't want to show the little finger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that, let's bring our next entrepreneur up. Yeah, that. That act of heroism that you had, we're gonna move on to another hero.
Lila as a relationship app didn't really come into my mind until I took an astrology class with my with my wife, and the teacher really just blew our minds with how astrology can be used to help people understand themselves and relate better. I got to a point in my teenage years where religion wasn't working for me anymore. And so I transferred my search for meaning into sports and I became a professional athlete. And that didn't provide me anything. And so I left that and I went on a journey around the world. And on that journey, I found astrology. And that motivated me to share this way of making meaning with the world. Through astrology, it was translating things that, that helped it make sense for me. I was able to derive some meaning out of thing, out of kind of symbolism, which was something I'd never done in my life. So that's how we got involved with Leela, just really excited to bring it out to the world and have you guys try it. You should invest in Leela because we're, we're giving back. You know, there's so many apps out there that take advantage of people, but we're offering very useful information and insights to make your life better. And to be a part of that is being a part of making the world a better place. Okay, so let's hear from Ricky and Matt from Lila. Give us your pitch. My name is Ricky Williams, and I am co-founder and CEO of Lila. And I'm Matt Cohen, co-founder and CEO of Lila. We call Lila the ultimate relationship app, and hopefully in a few minutes you'll understand why. So the problem we're addressing is an astronomical one. We've lost collective systems of meaning making. And the numbers show that people are moving away from religion and moving more to generalized spirituality and more specifically, moving towards astrology. And that's where Leela comes in. And Leela is an app that shows people how to use astrology to first understand themselves, understand others, and ultimately understand the world around them. And we do this through the three dimensions of relationship. The first is self-discovery. Here we use a proprietary astrological algorithm to help people understand and appreciate themselves. This is where we come to social discovery. And it's a meeting place for like-minded individuals to connect and meet each other. And now my favorite dimension is relationship building. So whether you meet on the app or you're already in a relationship, we offer you insights and show you how to actually use them in your daily life. And we believe the market opportunity is massive. Leela exists at the intersection of the online dating industry, which is at about $7 billion, continues to grow. And the mystic services industry, that's at $2.2 billion and continues to grow. Astrology app spend is actually growing 65% year over year. So in order to help me carry out my vision, I put together an all-star team. First, I'll start with my teacher, Stephen Forrest. Over 50,000 clients, several best-selling astrological books, He's mastered the ability to explain astrology to the layman. Also on the team, we have the Astro Twins. They're the astrologers for Elle Magazine. Their website, Astro Style, receives over 12 million views a month. With the team that we put together, we feel very confident and poised to do our part to make the world a better place. Thank you. Terrific. Well, that, hey, that's fun that we, we, got a, we got a couple of NFL stars here. It's like you found your your spirituality through this. What about Stephen Forrest? Is he, has he joined you full time or is he out doing his magic thing and then you're just tapping into it? It's not fair to say it's full time, but to this point, all the content we've created is his content. And we're pulling a lot more content from his dozen or so books. You know, I would have been laughing about this about a year ago, but Calm has grown to be a unicorn. It's grown to be a billion dollar company. But how do you spread it and how do people find out about it? Do, do you have some method to create a viral effect here? Well, f first, I think the quality of our astrological insights and the way that we've designed the program, it will create a viral effect on people. But I pointed out the Astro Twins who we brought on to our advisory board. They have over 300,000 monthly subscribers and their website gets over 12 million views a month. We already have a, a willing and able audience. We just have to reach out to them. The dating social networking component where you can meet new people, we're going to geofence it and there's going to be a certain threshold that needs to be met in each major market before we actually unlock it. But the feature will still be there within the app. So people go to use it, but then it's going to incentivize them to invite their network to join the app where local to then unlock it. Would you walk us through what a person would do? Would they ask us questions? Well, no, it's, a, it's a great question. So yes, we, we do need the time the place and the date of birth. But that's all. We don't we don't ask you any questions. We give you information about yourself. So you don't have to sit there and do this long self-reported questionnaire to go on your profile. We allow you to choose your what we call archetypes. We use Tim's, Tim's a Gemini. I'm a Gemini too. 
And, and so there'll be a list of archetypes. And so when people look on their profile, it's not just their sign, it's more embodied and alive. So people have a better sense of who they're interacting with. And our idea in one of our taglines is relate deeper. Because in the current dating apps, you just see an image, a picture of someone. You don't really get to see who's really there. And so we're really promoting people making deeper, more meaningful connections. Is the end goal here to, to match people up? Or is the end goal to sort of discover yourself and then bring people into the party? It's really discover yourself. We've lost this collective sense of meaning. And what I found in my own personal life when I met my wife, it turned into this amazing conversation where we realized that we were both spiritual people. And then she started studying astrology. We took a class together, and that's really where this idea came from, is we saw how our relationship, both of our second marriages, really flourished because we had this tool available to us. Talk to me about how you feel around certain groups of people who are going to really buy into this. If I'm Buddhist or if I'm Catholic, I'd just love to hear your, your thoughts around that. It's really anyone who has any kind of spiritual life. Because the spiritual life means you're finding a way to understand the world. Astrology is a, is a great tool because it's individualized. It's not anyone telling you what to believe. It's you learning a symbol system that you can then apply any way you want into your life. The other side of the demographic is people who have had some relationship experience and realize what it really takes to make a relationship work. Are these mostly women, or, or is it equal men and women? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask. Astrology? It's mostly women, but what we found with, with other similar apps is if the women are there, the men will come. Where do you get your income? It's a freemium model. So we are going to offer the basic features of the app to everybody for free, but there will be you know deeper insights, more features for the premium subscribers. What are the things that you believe that can make this a unicorn? I think it's going to be a unicorn. If you look at Facebook, if you look at these other apps, they're just taking things from people, right? They're taking their data, they're taking their information, and yes, they're giving them the ability to connect, but that's it. We're actually giving people empowering insights to help them live a more meaningful and fulfilling life. And for that reason, we think this can grow exponentially. Thank you so much, Leela, for coming and presenting to us. Great fun, and I hope you do spiritually heal us all. I think that would be yeah, wonderful. We, we need it. We'll be right back on Meet the Drapers. All right, heroes! <laughs> Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. Okay, so what did everybody think of Leela? When he said that you have to learn a new language, the question is, will somebody pivot like Ricky did to change the language of their life? I gotta believe that that's a hard thing to do, to pivot and then to meet somebody like he met which is really amazing that he met somebody that's like-minded, but it's not something that we do every day. I, I was a little concerned because I do think that he's got to somehow create a viral effect. Otherwise, it, it really is a very small group and it grows too, sm too slowly and they can't become big enough to um, make enough. Yeah, money. no, I think that when people use astrology, it's usually in times of of stress and trouble, what he said when they're looking for answers. If it's ever gonna succeed, it's now. But I was just kind of curious about what the, who's gonna go on this site that isn't already inclined astrology-wise. Dad, what did you think? Really, there wasn't much uh, that drove me to it. I'm not uh, keen on that. I think it's, uh, no, he's not going to connect. A little business modeling, a little bit of business advice, and this thing could, uh, it could be one of those things that takes off. I didn't think Calm would take off, and it's everywhere. Here we go. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I'm giving it sideways. Yeah, you know what? That's a good, that's yeah, you can go sideways. 
if you think it's got some I've, potential, but it's not quite there, I might even give it a like three quarters. I might even go to three no, quarters. I like, but, the, yeah. I like the sideways because of what you <laughs> yeah. pointed out. It, there is something there. The question for them is, are they really focused on trying to match people or make sure or give them depth? Yeah. Yeah. I know. How do you do that? Well, okay, we're going to go see our next, our third and final contestant of the day. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scene. <laughs> yeah, those are good. <laughs> <laughs> Everything starts when I was studying my uh, master's degree in Guadalajara. The professors asked me to create this company to be an entrepreneur. So I decided to create this coffee shop concept because I always love coffee. Since I was a child, my mom gave me always coffee with milk and with a concha. That was my breakfast. It's very natural for me to have this idea of to create coffee shops. I noticed that it was a very good idea to create this kind of space that people want to create something. The idea for the spaces give you that essence of inspiration, of give you that place that they need to create something in the world. And that's why we want to stay creating more spaces to obtain inspiration of people and to give inspiration that we have to share with the, with the world. You should invest with us because you can be part of this great story. This is really possible. This is really happening. And you can be part of the 200 stores that we're going to open in California. And you can be part of the history that is going to happen right there in one of our coffee shops in this beautiful state. Okay, here comes our next entrepreneur, Leon from Barra Cafe. Leon, give us the pitch. Well, my name is Leon Refreyer. I am the CEO of La Borra Cafe. We have this coffee shop uh, that we create the concept that people can get inspired through his spaces. So what we decide is to design each coffee shop with interactive areas that people can use this inspiration that they need to create a project. For example, we have this area of books that you can come and share a book, take another one for your home, and you can come, for example, and take a, one of our meeting rooms to work in that maybe future unicorn project. Or you can come and see a movie. We have these little areas of movies that you can use to see a movie that inspires. And you can come with your pet because we are pet friendly. We born eight years ago in Guadalajara, Mexico, with the first coffee shop in June of 2012. And eight years after that, we already have now 56 coffee shops in, in Mexico in June. Nine years after they were born, uh, it's going to be 100 coffee shops right there in Mexico. And we decided this year in 2020 to, to come here and, and roll a new adventure in the United States. And we already opened two coffee shops in Chicago. This is the first one that we opened right here in Chicago. Actually, you can, you can see it. This is a small coffee shop. The goal for the next five years is to open 320 stores in the United States, 200 in the state of California, and 120 in the entire United States. We think that we are the proof that everything is possible, and that is the communication of the brand, and that's the idea of the brand that tries to say to the people that everything you can dream and you can do it if you want it. We just come from nothing, and here now in the United States, in California with you, and then uh, next year we're going to be in Spain too, so we're expanding our brand and our business. Well, thank you very much. Terrific. Wow, you are already, you, you're already <laughs> off to the races. Now, how is Labora Cafe different from Starbucks? And can you somehow capture that market and take it away from Starbucks? Or is this a different experience so that they might go to Starbucks for one reason and then they might go to Labora Cafe for another reason? It's about the space. It's an interactive space that people really find a communication or a story that they're going to inspire them. We try to make interactive spaces and to share something that really are going to help them for his project. And that's why that's why we differ from all different brands uh, in Mexico, and that's why people like it, no? Because of the spaces that we design. So, is the is every Labora Cafe different, or are they all the same? Every Cafe Labora is different. There is another history to tell in each Borra Cafe. So, every message that you're going to find, every different kind of history that you're going to find them, it's, it's different. Do you have uh, central? purchasing and, and distributed, or does each one buy uh, independently? Tell us a little bit of how the management of the whole 
program is? Yes, of course. We produce almost everything that we sell. For example, the beans, right? We buy the beans in green beans. We roaster in different origins from Mexico. We produce all the food. Uh, for actually, if you come here to the second store that we open, right there we have the bakery. You produce everything internally. Uh, there is a lot of products that we cannot, for example, milk. We don't produce milk. We just buy the milk. But the essential part of the business, we produce it, no? Like the coffee cups and the beans, no? And the beans is a bit strategic, a strategic part that, that we decide to be part of the production. How much have you raised so far? And what are your revenues and what are your earnings? We raised more than $50 million already in eight years. So we sell last year $6.8 million. And are you uh, profitable yes. with that? Yes, yes, we have almost 30% of profits of that sales, yes. Um, but you've raised $50 million to get there? In eight years of history. Yeah. We had to think in the market. Mexico is a very different market than the United States, and you can say it in sales. We, we sell here almost 10 times more than we sell in Mexico in just one coffee shop. Because, you know, there is more market here in the United States. Because of the personal income that they have in Mexico, you, you, you have to remember that the minimum uh, income that people has is almost $200 monthly. It's a difficult uh, cost of things. It's a difficult situation of the money that you can sell in Mexico, or the money that you can sell here in the United States. I'm still having trouble with the financials. You've taken $50 million and you're sort of paying maybe two million back out, it doesn't work. So how how are you gonna change that? Or how? what am I missing? Maybe you have to think in pesos. Are you talking about 50 million pesos? What we raise right now is 7 million and 102 uh, yeah. million dollars. So it's yeah. in 7 million dollars. Pesos. You have raised 7 million and you have 6.8 million in revenue. That's all dollars, yes, $6.8 million of revenue. We, ri we raise $7.1 million in eight years of history, and we much have the better. 30% of profits. Okay, much better. In California, the project is to raise $50 million because each store have a cost of $250,000. So you need to raise a lot of money to go into the United States. It's a big yeah, risk because but you have a decent but, but, business going in Mexico. Yeah, it's a, it's a big risk, but it's also passionate. There is, we do it all the time. Like I told you, nobody believed in us eight years ago when we started and make a competition to a Starbucks in Mexico. They have like 400 coffee shops over there in Mexico. And we just born and we are growing up and people like it. Where do you see yourself growing? Yes. Because to your point, no, we're going in Mexico, the audience is going to be really small due to the fact that you, you don't earn enough monies to, to buy a cup of coffee. Yes, we have the project to open uh, 100 stores in June on 2021. We think that we are going to grow faster here in the United States because of the situation that I already told you. Europe is going to be a different history too. Each market has its own conditions and its own difficulties that we have to learn and we have to propose. The restaurants here are closing and or they're staying open by also letting people, taking their restaurants outside, but no one, no one is opening a restaurant. In March, we decreased our sales like 30%. In April, we decreased our sales like 50%. In May, in May, we still recovering because, well, people just get confidence to stay shopping again, but now digital. And now September, we recover and we sell almost the 95% that we used to sell. So what we discover is that if you stay in touch with the people, tell him a story that they want to hear, they're going to be with you at the same. Well, Leon, thank you so much for being on Meet the Drapers and for giving us thank your you. presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, Bye. good job. We'll be right back on Meet the Drapers. All right, heroes!
Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. So what did you think of Bora Cafe? I think he's doing very well. He's already growing. I, I don't know why he's on your program because I don't think he needs any money. He does need money. He's trying to raise $50 million to move into the U.S. to go after Starbucks. So this is a big entrepreneurial activity. He's got to hit it out the park, right? To make yeah. that happen. And it's so different. A coffee house in Mexico where they're storytelling and they're doing all that. And then he goes to Chicago. I don't know, it's a big city. Do they care about the storytelling or do they just want their coffee to move on? All the fantastic coffee shops in New York have closed and it's kind of a heartbreak. And they were, they sound like that, it, you know, where they have great character, they all close. and. Um, we don't have any coffee shops in our area anymore. I'm actually astonished that during COVID, he's been able to keep 95% of his revenue. Can they compete against Starbucks and can they compete against Pete's and all the other coffee shops that are out there? I, I look and I say COVID's gonna sweep through and then it's gonna crush all these businesses. And then the ones that start investing at the other end are gonna do really well. So there's, I think there may be something here. Okay, we gotta to come to a, a decision on him and bar a coffee. So let's see, do we have thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Okay, you got four thumbs up. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so now we've got to figure out which of these three companies moves on to the semifinals. Juan from Fanalyze, then we had Leela, and then we have Leon from Barra Cafe. Ronnie, why don't you start? Which one goes to the playoffs? Yeah, we didn't really ask about the coffee, you know, and so I was curious about the coffee. Oh, we didn't, did we? <laughs> oh my God, we totally yeah, forgot. Yeah, he sources his all his own coffee, but none of us know how good that is. We kept talking about the inspiration, and I'm like, well, what? Oh my God. How about, what does it taste like? <laughs> and so to me, the coffee matters. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> the only reason I'm interested in the market of the astrological world you know, I can I can understand the coffee of that. You know, I can I can taste that. But I, I would probably choose choose that one because it's, it's something there. I also think I would go with the um, astrology one just because I think it's a little bit of a safer bet than the coffee. I put that one second, even though it's a close second because for different reasons I think it could be good. The betting one I just I, I abdicate totally. Nothing about it was my thing. I'm in the same order as Polly. Really? Astrology. Yeah, I, you like astrology better than coffee, huh? Well, no, but uh, <laughs> as an investment, probably yes. I, I think the crystal ball is going to be closer to the astrology deal, but we'll figure <laughs> it out. Hey, don't use your ego on this. No ego. Let's bring on the entrepreneurs. Welcome back, all of you entrepreneurial heroes. Thank you so much for coming and meeting the Drapers. We really loved all three of your presentations. We thought it was great fun. Fanalyze. Juan, you've got a good thing going there. The concerns are the market size may be very limited, and so you're, you're gonna have to either charge a lot for the people who bet the most or are really obsessed with fantasy games, or you're gonna have to somehow make this so that it's more prevalent throughout all the people who are using fantasy games. Ricky and Matt with Leela. We were channeling the spirits and we were thinking, wow, this is really interesting. It's getting sort of the the core of humanity and the core of the individual and what, what they're made of and what they care about and, and is astrology the thing? I do like that it attracts more of the women and that may be a good thing for dating and getting to know people because the men usually go to the dating sites and the women don't. And so you may be onto something there. I think it requires a lot more business modeling. Somehow make it so that your customer 
automatically becomes your sales force. They automatically tell all their friends that they've got to get on this site. And if there's some way to program it so that that happens, this might be a real winner. And now Barra Cafe. We struggle a little bit with the numbers because you were in pesos and we were in dollars or vice versa, but I think we got the right numbers and I think that you have a very good business. We're very concerned about Starbucks. We're very concerned about how they could just wipe you off. We also think that there might be a really good opportunity right now because all these restaurants have been shut down. There's a, maybe a new opportunity to fund a restaurant like this. We've channeled all of this into the crystal ball and that's gonna send one of you to the semifinals. And the ones who don't get sent, make sure you do as much crowdfunding as you can so that you can jump straight to the finale. Illy Bini Rua. The astrology, astronomy. It's wild. There's coffee here. There's sports. There are athletes. They're everywhere. Leela. So Leela, you guys move up to the semifinals. The other two, you're still in the game. Get out there, crowdfund, send everybody to meetthedrapers.com and have them select you and put some money into your crowdfund. And you viewers out there, fund these heroes. That was maybe a little nerve wracking. They made me calm as, as, as uh, they asked questions and kind of uh, talked about our, 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 our progress and so forth. You know, Ronnie Lott talked about supercomputers and, and how we could compete with that. Supercomputers are not 100% accurate. We have a great team to, to compete with them uh, based on human knowledge and data sets that we could find that the computer can. They should invest in us because we're committed to building a successful startup. And our goal is really to be the Google for sports data. And a lot of people love and are passionate about sports. This was a very great experience for us. It's really make us to grow up like a company as a person. I think it's going to be fantastic. We have this opportunity to come and meet the drapers again. That will be great. We have a pro business right now in Mexico. We have a pro business here in Chicago. So we think that we're going to be a very good option to make a good revenues and profits for our investors. I really thought the Draper family was awesome. Ronnie, he was he was super cool, and Tim is hilarious. You know, he's a <laughs> he's a he's a clown, and I mean that in positive. As a professional football player, I've won a lot of trophies and a lot of awards, but this is this is at the top of my list to make it to the semifinals and beat the Drapers. We have this idea that we feel is revolutionary, but you never know if other people are going to get it. And so this is a sign to us that that we got something special, and we're looking to go all the way. We'll see you next time on. future with our tech, AI, VR, Bitcoin is the best, we'll build and work and grow with you, having fun along the way, we'll change the world for better, Me